power delivery stuff is something yeah. I, you know, we've talked about over the years. I was skeptical about doing stuff in that realm, but I've noticed that. And I think I, I'll give this anecdotal story too. Uh, we had a long time ago, I had a meeting at my place here in Houston of the Houston Audio Society here. And yeah. it was strictly to test uh, power conditioners going using an amp for them. And I can tell you my system never sounded worse than that day. Every single power conditioner, some to really ridiculous degrees, hampered the performance of the amps. And that just got me thinking that anything related to power delivery, you know, whether it's increasing yeah. impedance or other things that you can talk to more specifically, technically wise, is very important to the performance of this, this amp. I mean, everybody thinks a, a power supply should make it immune, but very few people make a perfect power supply. And even if you do, you can screw things up. If that, am I summing things up pretty well? Well, sure, near enough. But uh, the important point is um, uh, power, the quality of the power that's get, getting to your gear is fundamentally important in, in getting the best possible performance. And that starts, you know, with the wiring in the wall uh, and the certainly the outlets in the wall and then your power cords and all of that, all of that stuff. Um, and if you are a homeowner, I mean, if you have the ability to do work on your house and your AC wiring, um, then it, it doesn't really typically cost very much to have an electrician come out and uh, say, put in a dedicated 20 amp circuit, you know, something like that. And at least a hospital grade outlet in your wall. Uh, now there are lots of aftermarket outlets. And I, I personally, I happen to like the Furotech GTX series, their NCF stuff. That's my go-to. Um, but there are any number of other very good pieces that are made. And um, if you do, you know, that, then, then you have, a, again, you've got a good fundamental for delivering good clean power um, to your system. And then, you know, beyond that, you can experiment with power cables and and go to town. Now, I you, you made a good point about power line condition, those sorts of things, uh, interfering with the, the the performance of your system. And that's important to understand. Um, and, and again, I would say this is true for me too. I've ex Over the years, I've experimented with a lot of those. And there were very few of them that stayed in my system for very long. Um, and ultimately, they all came out and I felt that putting good wiring in the wall, coming to a good outlet, going to a good power cord, directing my gear was the best sound that I was going to get. Um, then I put the effort and time into developing the AC Nexus. And that's the only thing that's really changed my opinion about that. Um, that I don't want to be without because it's, it's a fundamental part of the performance of my system. And things definitely degrade. It's a step backwards when that comes out. But that's one of the very few things I could point to that I feel that way about. And I and admittedly, as I as I told you, it's crazy expensive. Um, excuse me, let me turn this off. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, that's a good point. Your your power, you made a point to say distributor. It's really not a conditioner in any traditional respect right not in the traditional sense now there there is uh, some noise filtration it's also true that um a big part of that design is um a, a whole subsystem built into it to improve the quality of the grounding in the system um and that's a key factor in its performance um that's all you know proprietary secret sauce stuff um which is built in uh and it also the AC Nexus um, is this, you know, power dis distributor system, uh, but it's also, it will act as a star center common ground point for the rest of your system if you are willing to, you know, take, take the time and effort to run wires to your individual, you know, equipments, the chassis and things like that, other metal parts in your system. And even your speakers, if they happen to be metal or, as in the case of the uh, Tidal Akiras that Rick Brown has, the, the designer 
was uh, savvy enough to actually add a grounding post to those speakers. So the entire internal metal structure of that speaker comes to a ground post on the back. And it's absolutely mind blowing <laughs> to hear what that does when you connect those grounds back to the AC Nexus. It's, you just have to trust me on this. Um, these are, you know, incredible world-class speakers. And uh, when you, add that ground connection to them. It's a real eye opener. It, everything is, sounds so much more realistic and so much better focused and so much cleaner. It's like, uh, I, I hope this is an idea that catches on in turn, because when, you're, when a speaker manufacturer is making a speaker, it's not a terribly difficult thing for them at that point in time to just, you know, to wire the, the baskets of the speakers together, get the various metal parts, you know, together, and then bring that out to a ground lug on the back. Or some speakers like, for instance, just YG to name one, that's a solid metal chassis. Um, and, and so you can, you know, hook up, make a connection to the actual uh, chassis of the speaker and ground that. And, and it pays real dividend, dividends. They're, they're unambiguous. You can absolutely hear it. Clearly. I think Tenoy has been doing that for a while. Hasn't they? Okay, great. Well, good yeah. for them. Yeah, so that's, yeah, it's a tweak that really isn't that uh, costly, as you talk about, for somebody to try. And really, grounding tweaks have been the hit uh, in recent years. Now, there's probably a fair amount of them that are snake oil and people that are not really providing any improvement in the ground. But you incorporating that part of your distributor too is kind of a dual benefit product. Exactly, and whether whether or not you take the additional step to to you know star ground everything and all the equipment in your system, it's still there enhancing the the quality of the AC power ground system that everything is connected to. So you get a good deal of benefit uh, from it regardless. But there are binding posts on it that you can connect additional ground wires to if you want to take that added step, as we have done in, in uh, for instance, in the Hi-Fi One demo system. Yeah, so when I look at being just an audiophile and being way naive in my early years, and less naive as I go along, and what I've learned is, you know, when there's something like a tweaky thing that gets a lot of pub-like grounding and the tweaky products, you know, I look for people that can make more than just those grounding products, a guy that like Steve that can make really everything he made even universal dvd players with multi-channel uh, sacd you know somebody that has that engineering background is probably going to pr provide a better grounding solution than somebody that's just that's all they do and so yeah I, i'm definitely interested in that my next level of testing is his uh, distributor product and i'm anxious to see again uh, you're doing both the preamp and the amp uh, mono blocks from my friend Doug, and we'll do a video on that as well. Can't wait to yeah. see this with the MBLs. That's going to be a custom chassis for him as well. Yes, and that he'll wind up with a preamp that's based on the VRE1, but um, somewhat simplified in a slightly more conventional chassis, but with a gravity base, um, that whole you know setup. Mm -hmm. And then the amplifiers we're doing for him are based on the DNA1s. Um, but the the transformers that are going to go into those are actually a little too big to fit in those chassis and and put the top on. So there'll be a custom top with a cutout for the transformer to pop up, so okay. to speak, and a dress plate on the transformer to make it all look nice. Uh, but that's the only way we can get those things to uh, to fit in those chassis. But that'll be ideal for his MBL speakers. Uh, to give him the kind of power and control in the base that really makes those things uh, come alive. It'll actually fit. I've seen some mock-ups of the faceplates of the amps, and they're going to look beautiful um, and match perfectly with the MBLs. And so people are going to want to stay tuned for that, as well as your new designs are just phenomenal, just to, as an aside. Oh, thanks. I've seen the, the, the prototype, uh, the pictures you've sent me, and I've always thought Burmester had the best chassis for my taste and the quality that they put in. And these new ones that you're coming out with are every bit, you know, their peer in just level of classiness, perform, you know, just a very appealing chassis design. Well, thank you. A typical of what you thought of doing the modded DNAs from the past, um, or even modding like I did just color wise. So 
you're going to want to um i'll put those pictures as steve sends to me yeah well. um we'll we'll provide some photo background on the stuff we've been talking about so